Mistakes is what makes us human. Ever thought about why some times in our life are so important in making us who we are? Today, we're going to look closely at what makes us human, finding out how our choices and even our mistakes have a special beauty when we're honest about them. Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss out on our journey. Stick with us till the end of this video because each word is meant to make you think in a way that could really change your life. For those who don't hold on to regrets, let's start a journey to deeply understand ourselves and what we might become. This is more than just listening. It's about feeling and thinking deeply as we experience changes within ourselves. Have you ever really thought about how great it feels to admit a mistake? It might seem easy, but many people don't do it because they are too proud or always making excuses. Making mistakes is part of being human, but admitting them is something special. That's the beginning of incredible change. Think about this and look around. You'll see people of every age and walk of life, each with their own stories, struggles and hopes. We all mess up sometimes, but what really shows who we are is our ability to say, I messed up. Why does this matter? When we stop being proud and start being humble, we connect with others in a real and meaningful way. It's like building bridges over what seemed like huge barriers. Now, think about a leader you look up to. Is it their perfection you admire? Or is it their willingness to recognize their mistakes and learn? Our errors show we're human, but how we deal with them can make us role models. It's not easy. It takes bravery, truthfulness, and being open about our weaknesses. But in that challenge is where the beauty is. Every trip and fall teaches us something. Every error is a chance to grow and become new again. Here's what we should do. When you mess up next time, see it not as showing your weak, but as a moment to prove your strength. Use that time as a chance to build, learn and change. As we end this thought, let's remember Greatness comes not from being perfect, but from getting back up every time we fall. Recognizing our shortcomings and learning from them shows who we really are and is the core of human strength. We all can be great. It's not about never slipping up, but about how we handle those slip-ups that define us, mold us and lift us up. Let's go on this discovery and growing journey together because by being open to our faults, we open ourselves to endless new paths. And that, friends, is the start of real change. For those who find pleasure in seeing others in pain, let's explore a part of human nature that's a bit hard to talk about, but really important for growing into kinder, more connected people. The habit some have of enjoying others' suffering. Think about it. Not focusing on the suffering, but on what makes a person happy to see it. It's not just about being evil, like stories might say, but it shows a serious lack of emotional connection. This kind of attitude creates unseen walls between us, leaving us stranded on our own little islands of apathy. When we see or hear about someone taking joy in another's hardship, we naturally feel upset or can't believe it. Why would anyone be happy about that, we wonder, shocked. But asking this question is actually a step towards making things better. By understanding this disconnect, we can start to build back the emotional connections and grow our ability to understand each other better. Empathy, or being able to understand and feel what someone else is going through, is the exact opposite of enjoying someone else's pain. Building empathy takes daily effort and a promise to look out for each other, helping us lift each other up instead of knocking each other down. By improving how we connect with others' feelings, we not only make our own lives better, but also help create a more united and compassionate world. Thinking about these actions isn't about judging, but inviting us all to reflect. Are we connecting with others or pushing them away? 
Are we practicing understanding and helping each other, or are we just not caring? Change starts when we notice these things and get stronger when we do something about it. Every effort to understand why we sometimes pull away emotionally, every step towards being kinder, helps us come together as a caring community. That's why reflecting is so powerful. It lets us turn our thoughts into actions for ourselves and for everyone else. Moving ahead, let's not forget how important it is to empathize, to look deeper than what we first see, and to recognize that deep down, we're all connected. We can make a world where enjoying someone else's pain is replaced with real care and actions that show we're all in this together. Now, let's talk about being fickle. It might seem harmless at first, but can actually be quite harmful. Being fickle means often changing views, feelings or commitments, not because we're growing or learning, but because it's easier or more convenient at that moment. This way of acting shows a lot about a person's moral base and what they value or don't value enough. Being fickle isn't just about not being able to decide. It shows a strong focus on oneself, putting personal comfort and needs first, no matter how it affects others. This has a big impact on relationships. Think about it. Trust is key in any strong relationship and depends on being dependable and steady. If someone keeps changing based on what's best for them, trust starts to disappear. Without trust, relationships stand on unstable ground, lacking the security and support they need. But why do some act this way? It could be a way to dodge difficult situations or a sign of not really knowing oneself or being scared to stand by their beliefs. Whatever the reason, it's a behavior that needs some thought and maybe change. Luckily, change is within reach. Noticing this trait in ourselves is the first step. After that, it's about becoming more self-aware, figuring out which values and principles we really want to guide us and sticking to them. This doesn't mean we can't ever change our minds, but we should aim for a kind of consistency that comes from being honest and respectful to others. Working on this kind of growth can be tough, but very rewarding, as it leads to stronger relationships, builds a real sense of trust with those around us, and helps us live in a way that matches our true values. Improving ourselves is a path that not only makes us better, but also positively affects those around us. So when we think about being fickle, let's use it as a chance to look at how we act and how it impacts our connections with others. We should aim to be reliable, not because we never change, but because we're steadily dedicated to bettering ourselves, staying true to our values and treating others with respect. If you find these insights on Stoicism helpful, feel free to share your thoughts or experiences in the comments. And if you're at a loss for words, simply drop human below, ready to move on. Now, let's talk about people who constantly complain. As we go through life, we meet all kinds of people, each with their unique outlook and way of interacting with the world. Some interactions uplift us, some test us, and some make us think deeply about human nature. Encountering constant complainers offers us a moment to reflect. This habit of always seeing the bad side of things shows more than just a natural tendency towards negativity. It often points to being self-centered and lacking gratitude for life's offerings. When people only look at what they're unhappy with, they miss out on the good things life has to offer, getting stuck in a loop of always being unhappy. Wanting more isn't bad if it's done in a healthy way. It can help us achieve great things, but when wanting more turns into never being happy with what we have, it shows we can't appreciate the now, which makes it hard to make a positive impact on others and the world. It's important to understand that this way of thinking doesn't just hurt the person doing it. It also spreads negativity to everyone around them, 
making friends, family and co-workers feel down and tired. But, like any habit, you can change being always unhappy by realizing what you're doing and deciding to act differently. The secret is learning to be thankful for the little things in life. Noticing and appreciating small good moments can really change how you see life. Being thankful is a strong way to fight off constant unhappiness, helping us see all the good we usually ignore. Bringing more thankfulness and appreciation into our lives doesn't just make us happier, it also makes us better people to be around. We can give more support, cheer, and positive vibes to the people in our lives, making our relationships and the world a better place. So, when we start to complain, let's use it as a chance to think and get back on track. By making an effort to notice and be thankful for all the good things we have each day, we can change how we feel inside and, as a result, make the world a better place. This change from being unhappy to being grateful helps us lead a happier and more satisfying life. In dealing with others, especially in the tricky ways people interact and try to influence each other, we often face challenges. One issue is how some people try to control everything, which can affect not just the people involved, but also everyone around them. This need to control usually comes from wanting to feel safe and sure about what's going to happen. But when this turns into trying to make everything happen the way one person wants, ignoring others' needs and feelings, it doesn't end well. Using force or tricks to control people hurts their freedom and self-respect, and it damages the trust and respect that are needed for any good relationship. It's even worse when someone tries to invade another person's privacy or ignore their personal space. These actions are not caring, they're just ways to dominate others. They show that someone is more interested in their own wants than in others' happiness. This behavior often points to deep-seated fears and a struggle to accept that we can't control everything in our relationships with others. Dealing with and changing these behaviors takes a lot of self-reflection. It starts by realizing that wanting to control things usually comes from our own fears and insecurities, not really about managing others. To move forward, we need to learn to let go, trust people, and be okay with not knowing everything that will happen. This journey isn't easy. It means being open about our feelings, understanding ourselves better, and sometimes asking for help from friends, family, or therapists. But changing these controlling habits is worth it. When we stop trying to control everything, we make room for healthier, more balanced relationships where everyone feels valued and free. This change doesn't just help those who like to control. It makes life better for everyone involved, creating a space filled with more freedom, respect, and true connection. In short, our desire to control things shows us our own limits and reminds us that we're all in this together. Recognizing and working on this issue is brave and important for building stronger, more positive relationships. By working on ourselves, we don't just improve our own lives, but also help make the world a place with more respect, independence and understanding. As we dig deeper into human behavior, we find indifference, which is as harmful as it is quiet. It's not just a moment of not caring, but a continuous choice to ignore the feelings, experiences and needs of others. When someone always takes over conversations and doesn't recognize or respect others' feelings, it's more than just annoying behavior. It's a sign of a deep emotional gap. This inability or unwillingness to feel and share what others are going through shows a lack of kindness and comprehension. This indifference builds unseen walls that push people away and make them feel lonely and uncomfortable. Empathy, the ability to understand and share the feelings of others, is crucial because it binds people together, 
helping them support and grow with each other. Dominating talks is a clear sign of this problem. By not letting others share their views, the person isn't just taking control of the discussion, they're also dismissing others' experiences. This isn't just rude, it shows they don't really care about others, treating them as background characters in their own story, instead of recognizing them as individuals with their own lives and stories. Dealing with your own indifference or someone else's can be tough, but it's important for improving yourself and your relationships. The way to break down this emotional wall is by working on being more empathetic, making an effort to truly understand and feel what others are going through. Starting to be more empathetic can be as simple as listening more than you talk, asking others questions that show you really care, and trying to understand things from their perspective. Being empathetic isn't just about feeling. It's a conscious decision you make every day to connect more deeply with the people around you and the larger world. When we choose to increase our empathy, we're not just making our own lives better. We're helping to create a kinder, more connected world. So, when we notice indifference in ourselves or others, it's a chance to think and make a change. Choosing to understand and connect with others instead of ignoring them leads to stronger relationships and more personal happiness. In a world that can sometimes seem uncaring and distant, every effort to understand and connect is a step towards a friendlier and more welcoming future for everyone. As we interact with others, we see all sorts of behaviors, including the act of lying, which stands out as particularly troubling and revealing. When someone lies repeatedly, it tells us a lot about their personality and what they stand for. Lying is often used to twist situations and people's perceptions to benefit the liar. This manipulation damages trust, which is crucial for any kind of healthy relationship, whether it's with friends, at work, or in our love lives. Once trust is broken, our connections become fragile, filled with doubt and uncertainty. The habit of lying also shows a selfish attitude and a lack of ethical values. Liars put their own needs first, with little care for how their lies affect others. This behavior is harmful to those around them and shows a lack of courage and honesty in dealing with life. Yet, it's essential to remember that people are complex and there are many reasons why someone might lie. These reasons can range from feeling insecure or scared to wanting to protect themselves or someone else. Understanding that lying can have many causes helps us see the issue more fully and deal with it in a helpful way. People can change, but it takes desire and a real effort. Being honest and open is a continuous challenge that requires bravery. It means facing our fears and weaknesses head on. Choosing to be truthful, even when it's hard or makes us feel uncomfortable, shows real strength of character and a dedication to forming deeper and more meaningful connections. So, when we think about the issue of lying and what it means, it's a chance for us to look inward at our own values and how we live our lives. Encouraging honesty in ourselves and our relationships not only lifts the burden of lies, but also helps us create a legacy of trust and respect. Even though the truth can be difficult, it lays the groundwork for real and lasting bonds. People who seem emotionally cold create a barrier between themselves and others. This trait can come from many places, like past hurts or deep-seated fears of getting hurt again. While it might look like they're just being self-centered or lacking empathy, often they're trying to protect themselves from more pain. Focusing mostly on their own needs and wants, these individuals miss out on the warmth and closeness that come from caring for and connecting with others. This approach doesn't just keep them from building meaningful relationships. It leaves a gap where warmth and genuine care for others should be. Seeing emotional coldness as a way some people try to guard themselves is key. 
This protective shell forms over time, often because of painful experiences like rejection or betrayal. A heart that used to be open can become closed off, trying to avoid more hurt. But using this defense has a big downside. It cuts off the chance for real, deep connections with others, which are crucial for feeling happy and whole. There's hope for change. The first step in dealing with emotional coldness is to recognize and figure out where it comes from. This could involve looking inward, talking to a therapist, or having heart-to-heart -heart discussions with people we trust. Starting to tackle the fears and hurts hidden underneath our emotional guard is tough. It means having the bravery to face our weak spots and the openness to connect with others on a deeper level. But the rewards of this effort are beyond measure. As we let go of our emotional barriers, we welcome the true essence of human connections, understanding, support and affection. So, if you're dealing with emotional coldness, think about embracing this change. Working on our feelings and our connections with others can lead us to a life filled with not just closeness, but real warmth and genuine bonds. When people criticize others, using criticism to help someone grow and get better can be helpful. But if it's always negative and used to make others feel small, it says more about the person who is criticizing than the one being criticized. This kind of behavior, where someone tries to make themselves look good by putting others down, shows that they are insecure and not very honest. This habit of always finding faults in others isn't just a small thing or a part of someone's personality that doesn't matter. It's a way some people try to feel better about themselves by pointing out what they see as mistakes in others. They do this to feel above others, thinking it will cover up their own weaknesses and things they are not proud of. However, this way of trying to make themselves feel important is not healthy. It relies on negative actions and trying to control how others see them, instead of working on being genuinely good and confident in who they are. This kind of behavior usually starts because someone can't see or value their own good points and achievements. Instead of trying to get better in positive ways, they use criticism to try to make themselves look better compared to others. But this method doesn't last because feeling good about yourself based on putting others down is unstable. It changes as people's opinions change. To stop this behavior and change, a person needs to do a lot of self-reflection and commit to healthier ways of seeing themselves and interacting with others. Building a good view of oneself in a healthy manner means recognizing and celebrating your own achievements and working on your weak spots by yourself, not by comparing yourself to others. Also, learning to understand and value everyone's worth can help stop the habit of harmful criticism. When we choose to look for the good in others and focus on lifting them up instead of bringing them down, we help create a more positive and supportive environment where everyone can do well. So when we feel like criticizing someone, we should ask ourselves, are we trying to feel better in a good way? Or are we trying to make ourselves look better by making others look worse? By choosing to grow in a real and supportive way, we open up to better relationships and truly improve how we feel about ourselves. In this voyage of understanding and self-improvement, let's dive into the value of patience. Patience isn't just waiting quietly, it's a powerful form of strength. When we learn to pause and take a breath before reacting, we give ourselves a chance to choose kindness over quick judgment. This pause can transform moments of frustration into opportunities for empathy and connection. Imagine how different our interactions would be if we all took a moment to understand before responding. This practice of patience isn't just about making life smoother for ourselves. It's about creating a ripple of calm and understanding that can touch the lives of those around us. 
Next, let's explore the beauty of simplicity. In a world crowded with noise and distractions, finding joy in simple things can be revolutionary. It's about appreciating a quiet morning, the laughter of friends, or the peace of a walk in nature. This appreciation for simplicity helps us cut through the clutter of daily life, reminding us of what truly matters. By valuing the simple moments, we cultivate a sense of gratitude that enriches our lives and deepens our connections with others. So, as we journey through life, let's remember to pause and find joy in the simple, for these moments are the heartbeats of a life well lived. Exploring the significance of forgiveness in our personal development journey adds another layer to our quest for self-improvement. Forgiveness is not merely about letting someone else off the hook for their mistakes, but rather freeing ourselves from the weight of carrying anger and resentment. It's about understanding that holding on to grudges binds us to the past, preventing us from moving forward. When we choose to forgive, we open our hearts to healing and peace, allowing us to focus on building a future filled with positive possibilities. This act of forgiveness is a testament to our strength and maturity, showcasing our ability to rise above pain and look towards a horizon of hope. Also, talking and listening to each other in a real way is super important on this path. Good communication is not just about sharing info, it's about really connecting with people. It means listening with care, saying what we truly feel and think, and respecting what others have to say. By communicating like this, we make our relationships stronger and more meaningful. It helps us learn to be there for others, really listen to them, and be true to ourselves. When we're open and honest in how we talk, it creates a place where everyone feels listened to, respected, and important. As we think about what we've talked about today, we hope it's not just something you think about, but something that really changes you. If this message has reached your heart, don't forget to subscribe for more insights like this. As always, until next time.